Welcome back to the Emerald City Comic Con live stage. My name is Danny Roth. I was here five seconds before, and now I'm here again. Uh, I still smell fine. It's a Friday. Don't believe the lies about my odor. It's perfectly acceptable. Uh, I am here with Scott Duval to talk about the Army of Darkness Bubba Hotep crossover comic that's happening uh, uh, thanks uh, to Dynamite and IDW also kind of allowing things to happen, which is very, very kind of them. Yes. Um, so you are doing this because you are a fan of at least Army of Darkness, but one would assume also a Bubba Hotep fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of both of these properties. Um, Bruce Campbell is really what brought me to Bubba Hotep. You know, I was an Evil Dead fan before I was Bubba Hotep. Uh, I grew up with Army of Darkness, and it just made natural sense that these two properties should eventually meet up, and, and now it's actually happening, so. Uh, so it came out, Army of Darkness, what, 92? I, I believe it was 92, yeah. Okay. Uh, my mother would not let me see it in theaters, so I had to go see Groundhog Day instead. Not a, not a, not a suffering. No, not at all. I love Groundhog Day. <laughs> I had to wait until it came out on VHS. Yeah, that, when I did think you that's see how it? most of us discovered it, too. Yeah. That, that was my experience as well, was seeing it for the first time on VHS. Um, my mother probably also not, would have not approved at that time, so I had to sneak up to the neighbor's house and watch it at his place. And that was my first introduction to Sam Raimi's Evil Dead trilogy. I actually... You started with number three. Yeah, I started with the third one, and then I watched them in reverse order. So that was kind of an interesting entry point into the series. So is Army of Darkness still... Is it your favorite, or...? Um, Be I, honest, tell the truth. I think that Evil Dead 2 might have taken the top spot, but uh, Army of Darkness, just because it was my first introduction, and I honestly think it's Bruce Campbell's best performance as Ash, it's still that, that movie holds a really special place for me for that reason. So uh, I know that, uh, like me, you'll do like a, like a midnight screening. Did you go to one like relatively recently? I hosted one, yeah. That so all right, so you host a screening. Yeah. What do you do? So I reached out to my local art house theater, the Rio Theater in Vancouver, and I said, hey, I'm writing this Army of Darkness Bubba Hotep crossover. I think this could be a really cool thing to get people out here to see Army of Darkness for a midnight screening, and Dynamite was uh, kind enough to provide a bunch of copies that I was able to distribute to everybody in the crowd. So everybody who came to the screening got a free issue of the comic. So hopefully we have a bunch of new Army of Darkness comic fans on our hands now. That's dope. So talk about the comic. Um, I read the first issue. Uh, it's real good. There are mummies with, uh, uh, you know, white jumpsuits with the rhinestone and such, uh, and two Bruce Campbells, and maybe some time travel. Yeah. Um, that's my pitch. <laughs> but you wrote it, so. Sure. So if you guys aren't familiar with Bubba Hotep, um, it's a really weird movie. It's based on a Joe R. Lansdale short story. And essentially what it is is Elvis Presley has, um, he's old now and he's retired and Not dead. No, no. Kind of so no notable. <laughs> Elvis is still alive. So he actually, in this version, he swapped places with an Elvis impersonator and it was the Elvis impersonator who died. And now we have an old man Elvis living in a retirement home in East Texas and he is getting besieged by an Egyptian mummy who fell off of a truck uh, while it was being transported. It's taken on kind of a cowboy attire, and now it's chosen this uh, rest home as its praying grounds because, as we all know, mummies move very slowly, so it needs some slow-moving prey. So it preys on all of the, the weak elderly people that are sharing the space with Elvis. Well, how slow can it stay, honestly? <laughs> like, what's the, what's the challenge? So, um, this picks up pretty shortly after the events of those movie, or, or of the Bubba Hotep movie. Ash, he really looks up to Elvis. Elvis is one of his heroes, and he catches wind that, there may, that Elvis may not have died. Because um, as we all know, Elvis died very young. He was about 42, and Ash, is not getting any younger, and he realizes if he keeps going at the same rate that he's been going, that he may not last much longer as well. So when he uh, reads in a, a tabloid clipping that Elvis is actually alive and kicking in, uh, in Texas and vanquished a mummy, that gives him hope that, hey, if Elvis is still alive, maybe, you know, there's hope for me that I could 
you know, live out my life the way he did. So he sets out on this journey to Texas to see if he can find the, the one true Elvis. And if Elvis is, in fact, alive, maybe Elvis could mentor him or give him some tips on how to, you know, continue kicking ass into his old age. So that's, that's where we, we enter. So what was the process in figuring out how you were going to write two iconic Bruce Campbell characters, but, you know, one of whom is a real person? Mm -hmm. Like, how did you figure out not just how to write them, but I think more importantly, how to write them together? Um, that was really the whole impetus on, on what this, this crossover was born on, was the idea of these two uh, iconic Bruce Campbell characters meeting for the first time. I think that's really where the series sings, is when those two characters are interacting and talking to each other. And, and that's really why this comic exists in the first place, is I wanted to see what that would look like. So this crossover has been in my head for the past three or four years. I've been thinking about it. And so when it came time to actually write it, when I got approval to do it, it didn't take me very long at all to figure out the story. I knew exactly what I wanted to do in order to get these two characters together. Uh, man, there's like stuff that I want to know, but that's, but that's further out. So there's time travel. Yes. Can you talk at least a little bit about that? Absolutely. So uh, as we all know, Ash is no stranger to time travel. And there's another Bubba Hotep story, a prequel to the movie that Joe Orlansdale told, which we see Elvis more in his prime. Uh, and so I wanted to explore that side of Elvis in here as well. So when we first are introduced to Elvis, he's an old man. But then Bubba Hotep comes back. He steals uh, an Egyptian pharaoh suit of Elvis, one of his jumpsuits. He uses that to transport back into 70s Vegas. And then that's where we where Ash, uh, he jumps into the portal after Bubba Hotep, and that's where issue two takes us. It all takes place in 70s Vegas on the strip, so. Will Elvis get younger? Yes. Will the mummy get younger? No. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, you... Uh, El Elvis doesn't jump back in time. It's, it, oh, all right. Yeah, all Ash right. goes back, and he, now he's teamed up with a younger, more vibrant 70s-style Elvis. That makes sense. Yeah. Insofar as time travel ever makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you made a soundtrack. I did. Yeah. What's on the soundtrack and what was your logic on? I mean, like, obviously it helps with the writing, but also, you know, yeah. I think it helped with people reading it. So talk about that. I mean, uh, you can read it, obviously, the way it's intended to, just at your own pace uh, with no distraction. But I thought it'd be cool just because I'm so inspired by some of the great movie soundtracks. I, I love a director who knows how to use music in, in his movies, like Tarantino's really good at it. Um, um, the Scott Pilgrim soundtrack is really good. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to try my hand at it as well and see if I could choose some songs, curate a soundtrack uh, that would accompany each of the issues. So there's about, there's four songs per issue. You can play it in the background as you're rereading it, and maybe it'll add a little extra element to it. Uh, I think it's just a fun way to set the tone for the series. And the first issue, I threw some um, Deep Purple in there. You guys got to go space trucking sometimes. Um, there's at least one Elvis song per, per issue, naturally. Um, uh, for issue two, I chose a 70s soundtrack, since it takes place all in the 70s. So there's some Sabbath in there. Uh, some big star, the band Television. So I've just been having, having a lot of fun choosing songs and reading while listening to the songs in the background and seeing how they fit. And so hopefully people get a kick out of those. I think it's a, it's a little fun promotional thing. You can find the, the soundtrack on Doom Rocket website. They, they're hosting that for me. That's such a cool idea. Uh, so I know you're a big fan. I know as a result, you've got, you're wearing an S-Mart shirt. You've got some Army of Darkness socks. Yes. But I know at home you've got memorabilia what is your what is your thing what like if you were going to pick one the one that you would show everybody what would it be hmm um i mean honestly it's probably the uh, the bootleg edition of army of darkness that i own it, which was a rare dvd um i don't even know if you can find it now. it's probably out of print but that was the first uh dvd that i owned of army of darkness i think i have three copies now but I love that. Was it one of those double-sized ones? It was like a double thick, or 
Um, you, like, what's the shape of it? Now I want to know if I have this thing. <laughs> um, it, it looks like it comes in a paper sack. Like it look, Oh, all right. No, yeah, I don't have that one. On the artwork, and so it, it very much looks like a bootleg edition. Like, even the disc, when you pop it out, it looks like a CDR with, like, the title written on there. Oh, yeah, all right. I know yeah. this edition. I know yeah. it. Yeah, and I just love it because you have the original theatrical version of Army of Darkness and then the director's cut, which ends in a very uh, dystopian way. So I, I love both endings. Uh, one of them is a little more dark. Um, I actually would love to explore that version in a comic someday and just see Oh, yeah, can... the one where he winds up in the future. Yeah, is yeah. It's real cool. Because I think there's some story to tell there as well. Yeah. I, uh, I have a chainsaw. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've spent a ridiculous amount of money for an actual chainsaw to be repurposed so that you could put your hand in it. There was a, I went to Etsy. I wish I could remember the name of the people that did it, but uh, if you've got money to waste mm -hmm. on a thing that you can have in your house and have people go, really, dude? Yeah. Totally worth it. Absolutely. Remind me where you live again? Uh, <laughs> none of your business. Uh, so... Right. Um, I tried. Yes. A, a fair attempt it was. <laughs> uh, all right. I want to end on this just because you've got two uh, Bruce Campbell characters in it. Obviously, that's probably where it's going to have to end. But, like, if you were going to put one more Bruce Campbell character to make, like, a guest appearance, which one would it be? Um, I think just Bruce Campbell himself. Okay, just yeah. the real man. You yeah. Maybe you could get away with that. I Who think knows? so. He's, put him in the background. Yeah, he's, he's kind of, be, you know, embraced his Bruce Campbellness. Um, you know, he... He actually did, um, he is aware of the crossover. I know this because he tweeted out a, a link to it and his exact quote was, what the flying hell? <laughs> and so I, I borrowed that line of dialogue and I actually put it in issue three. So. Nice. <laughs> so, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. But I think just having Bruce Campbell in there just to meet his, his creations would be kind of the way to go. There you go, you just have to get to at least uh, the 90s, I guess. That would be the time to do it. When, yeah. Just as he's done finishing uh, Army of Darkness, it's a free ID for you. Love uh, it. Yeah, put him in there. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thank you. All right, so the first issue is out now. When is the next issue out? First issue's out, available now. The second issue comes out this coming Wednesday. And I actually, for anybody in the crowd, come find me after. I brought a whole bunch of free copies courtesy of Dynamite, my publisher. So who, if anyone likes free comics, come find me. Get a free book, baby. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Up next, we've got the Bitter Root Creative Team, and they're going to talk about their new Image Comics title. Uh, so stick around for that. And please make sure that you're talking about us, sci-fi, uh, using the hashtag ECCC, and uh, hashtag It's a Fan Thing. And we'll be right back. <laughs>